Welcome everyone, welcome to Onion Skin, an ongoing project to train people in 2D animation focusing on a wonderful piece of software, Toon Boom, and this is Toon Boom Studio. Right now I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get started in animating in just a few minutes. Now this video in particular is targeted towards absolute beginners to get some instant gratification and to start making things quickly, for if you're new to making pictures move or even drawing in a digital environment at all. If you're an avid Flash user and want to know what all the fuss is about with Toon Boom, I will be making a complete migrating from Flash series to help ease the pain and to get you as excited for the change as possible. First, what you need is Toon Boom Studio. Link is in the description for you to download the best piece of animation software for rookie animators there is. It's free for the first month and not a lot of people are using this program yet, but believe me, they should be. And that's why I'm gonna take you through it. When you've got it up and running, this is what you'll see. Depending on your version, this interface may look slightly different, but the main categories you need to look at are the frame rate and camera size. I've set the camera size to a standard HD format that's 1920 by 1080 and a frame rate of 24. Hit create and off we go. So this, as you saw before, is the main interface of Toon Boom Studio. And the very first thing you'll notice is that there's a big grid in the middle. Now, I don't use the grid. Fortunately, it's really easy to turn off. Up here in the top left is hide grid. That's better. The main interface is separated into four separate panels. The main working area, the timeline, the palette, and the pen controls. The first tool we're gonna to take a look at is the brush tool. It does exactly what you think it would do. It draws lines. If you're drawing with a mouse, it will stay the same thickness as you move around. If you've invested in a drawing tablet, it will move between two different weights depending on how hard you press, which is determined down here. This allows you to get quite a large amount of diversity when creating your artworks. When you finish drawing a piece of artwork, there's several other tools you can use to manipulate it. First is the selection tool, the black arrow. It will do a box select to grab all the artwork that you've done, and then you can then move it around and resize it using these handles. It will tend to warp things. So if you hold shift, it will keep it scaled. And if you hold alt, it'll do perspective. Like that. Control Z will undo and Command Z will undo if you're using a Mac. So now that we have finished this drawing of this budgie character, we can use the paint bucket. If you've used any other digital program before, you'll know exactly what it does. Choose a color, slap in whatever you want. Thank you. And now we have straw budgie. Doesn't he look fabulous? If the color you want to use doesn't appear in this list, which is quite extensive, hit the green plus button here. It'll add a new color. If you double click on the word, you can change the name, uh, make it a bluey thing. And if you double click on the color itself, you'll get a color picker. A few other keyboard shortcuts to keep in mind to help you move around the program much faster. Holding the space bar will let you pan around. Using Z and X, you can zoom in and out of the drawing area. And if you click down on the timeline first, it will zoom in and out of that. C and V will rotate the interface so you can draw at a different angle. And A and S will move you forwards and backwards through the timeline by one frame at a time. And that's what we'll talk about next. Now that we've got our character here, we want to animate him doing something. If you are starting out for the first time, using stick figures is fantastic because you can do lots of drawings very quickly and focus on movement and getting something energetic going. If you've gone a bit more ambitious and you've drawn a character with detail like this, it can be a bit harder. How are you gonna make the drawing similar enough on the next frame to have it not just wobble about and look all chaos? There's a few different ways we can do it. First, we'll move on to the next frame. 
And up here is a button called the onion skin. The onion skin lets us see forwards and backwards through time. Looking backwards one frame, we can see tinted in red is the frame we've already drawn. So we can draw it again a little bit differently. So what I want to do is make straw budgie flap up and down a few times. Some parts of it I'll need to redraw, but other things I don't need to. So what I'm going to do is box select all of this artwork with the black arrow and do command C to copy. And on the next frame, command V to paste it again. Now it's very important to select the stage first and then command V to paste. I'll explain why shortly. But now we can take all the parts that we want and make it a little bit different. So I'm going to select all of it and move him up a bit. I'm going to remove everything down here. Select this wing. The circle in the middle is a pivot point. That can be rotated up to the side. And you see now that my cursor has changed to two arrows, that allows me to rotate it where I want it to go. So there we go, the wing's now up. I'm going to select the head. If you hold shift down, you can select a few other pieces as well uh, without losing what you've already selected. I'm going to move the head down a bit and rotate it to the side. You can see I've accidentally selected this yellow bit. I'll just delete that at this point. And a few other stray lines. I'm going to delete those as well. It's just looking a bit messy. Another healthy technique, besides just using the onion skin, is to repeatedly flip back and forth between your two frames. That's what I'm going to do to track where these yellow seeds are on Straw Budgie, to make sure that they still appear relatively in the same place of his body, no matter where we move. There we go. <laughs> Pretty goofy, but get the idea. Up here is the play controls. First turn on loop and hit play and we'll see our magnificent glorious piece. That's gonna win us many awards but we can make that better. The next thing I want to show you is exposure. Exposure is how long an individual drawing is seen before it changes to the next one. The shortcuts for this is R and E. If I tap on the frame that I want to extend and push R a few times, you see that drawing is now shown for this many frames before flipping to the next. So we can see that happens. This allows us a lot more control without having to put in as many drawings. However, it's not a smooth animation yet at all. We want something in between to show it taking off. This is where the onion skin comes in the most handy. I'm going to tap on the frame in between these two drawings and hit delete. There's now a gap in the middle. With the onion skin turned on, I can now see both the frame before and the frame afterwards. And if I press A and S, I can now tell very clearly what's supposed to be happening in the middle. I'm going to do the same techniques I did the first time, grabbing and moving the artwork that I can and drawing the ones that I can't. Watch closely and notice that I'm constantly testing things and moving the head around so I can get it exactly how I want it. Now this wing I want tilted like this but it's going over the top of the head, what can I do? If you right click on the artwork and go down to arrange, there's send backward and send to back. That will move the artwork behind everything else.
There we go, that drawing's finished, and we've created what's called an in-between. And you can see that if we just kept doing that, adding more and more in-betweens, we'd end up with a more fluid animation. Looking at the timeline, you can see the exposure. The first drawing will be shown for, what is it, one, two, three, four, five frames. Second drawing will be shown for just one frame, and the last drawing will be shown for two. So what I'm gonna do is space these out a bit more effectively to make the animation more appealing. By moving this one in the middle, I'll drag it across, so now these are both shown for two. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so it opens up evenly enough, but then snaps back down the bottom. So I'm going to highlight these two frames and copy them and put them at the end. So now the whole thing plays through a bit smoother. Let's see what it looks like if everything is shown for just two frames. There's something to look all right. I think if we increase the exposure of the wings being up, we should get something that looks a bit better. Oh, a bit too much. That one is three. There we go. So that looks all right. The last thing I want to show you for now is the difference between copying artwork and copying frames. It will drive you mad unless you see it now. So I'm going to demonstrate this on a new layer where I'm going to draw a black circle, a red circle, and a blue circle. We see it has an exposure of one frame. And say in the next frame, I want the three circles to still be there, um, but now be, say, squares, but with the same colors. So I'm gonna pick, copy that frame and I'll paste it here and I'll erase this blue one and I'm gonna draw in a blue square. But oh no, what's happened? My first drawing is gone. It's not there anymore. Notice that it's actually fused it in with the first one. When I first hit copy and paste, even if I do it all the way out here, it connects it all as one piece. How do you avoid that? Now there's two ways of doing it. One is you select the artwork itself and copy that, paste that into the next frame. Uh, sorry, select the frame, touch in the artwork panel, and then paste. You see, I still get confused by it. And now we have two separate pieces. Notice that the drawing is split, two different frames. So now if I erase this one and draw in the square, they're two different frames. So I'll make that one blue, that one yellow, just so we can see the difference. There we go. So they are two different drawings. So a different way of doing it, which is the preferred way, is you increase your exposure out. Say, I want to use this drawing, but I want to make it a little bit different. Right click on the cell and press duplicate drawing. That will make a split. It will allow me to make any kind of artwork changes and it will remain unaffected. So do muck around a few times with the difference between copying artwork and copying frames. Otherwise, you'll probably find yourself deleting something that you didn't want to. When you finish your video and you want to export it, or you just want to give it a test, go to File, Export Movie. Here we see a lot of different export options, everything from Flash SWF um, to YouTube, television, or feature films, if that little flapping straw budgie is worth paying $20 and sitting down for two hours to watch that loop. Absolutely, we'll make millions. I recommend changing the export format to QuickTime Movie. Hitting options on the export settings, you'll be given this panel. Hit settings, frame rate's 24, that's right. Keyframe all, millions of colors plus. Leave quality at best. Compression type is animation, press OK. Yep, 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 that's all good. Make sure you know where it's gonna be saving to. At the moment, this looks like it's gonna save into my movies folder, simply called output, and out it comes. It can take a moment to render certain files, particularly big ones, but you'll get a very high quality that will work on most things. Here we go, and there he is, flapping around. The reason why it's on a black background 
is because of millions of colors plus. What it means is it adds transparency. There isn't actually black in the background, it means there's nothing. So if we were to put in a background or something else, it would come through rather than having a solid color. So if you want it to just be white, probably just put a white square in the background or just leave it at millions of colors when you export. So this should be enough for you to keep practicing and make some fun stuff, but this certainly isn't all. So please join me every week as we go in depth on every feature that Toon Boom is capable of, a complete beginners to masters course, focusing on everything from how to animate in a variety of different styles and all the tricks and techniques and how to best use the program to your personal needs. So stick with me and you should be able to make something cool to impress your mates with, or just might even be able to start your career. Thank you very much for joining me, everyone. Farewell.